Good morning and I would like to welcome you back to Sonnet Institute of Technology. My name is Bruce Malauti and I'm super excited to be your instructor. Today we'll talk about enabling HTTP and HTTPS on a Cisco IOS device. This particular topic is aimed at associate network engineers who are currently busy preparing for their CCNA routing and switching exam. Just to give you an insight, HTTP and HTTPS are both TCP protocol. By default, HTTP listens on port 80, while HTTPS listens on port 443. Theoretically, a Cisco router can be reached through um, HTTP or HTTPS in addition to Telnet or SSH. Most engineers prefer to use SSH instead of the web GUI for two main reasons. The first reason is SSH is faster than web GUI. Typing commands is faster than uh, uh, clicking on the web GUI and I will show you uh, why is that. Secondly, security concern. HTTP is not secure, whereas HTTPS is, uh, is secure. So this is one of the shortest topics in this curriculum and without wasting time, let's jump into the configurations. In this lab exercise, I'll show you how to enable HTTP and HTTPS on a Cisco IIS device. The minimum requirement for, 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 for this exercise is you need one uh, Cisco router or switch that will be running iOS 15 or above and then finally you need one PC. So in this demonstration like I said I'll show you how to enable the HTTP and HTTPS and we'll go to router 1 and assign an IP of 10.10.10 dot one slash twenty four on the first Ethernet uh, zero slash zero. We'll then configure username and password and then we'll enable HTTP and HTTPS. Then we will specify the local login and finally we'll test our configurations from the PC. Here we are here I am on the GNS3 topology and I've got the router one here and I've got my test PC. So what I need to do is on router one, I can start the console and let's just start configuring. So show IP interface brief. Okay, first internet slash zero zero is no IP and it's down. So let's give it an IP and bring it up. So I mean, global configuration that's CovT, and then I choose my uh, interface that will be F F A slash F A zero slash zero. My IP address is ten dot ten dot ten dot one slash twenty four. No shut down command to bring the interface up. And the next thing I need to do is to assign a username. So I'll exit from here back to the global configuration mod and username rules and privilege. Uh, for the HTTP or HTTPS to work, you need privilege 15. So you gotta specify whenever you create your user you must specify that privilege 15 so and then my secret password so that will be secret zero and then my password is red yet the next thing is to enable the http that will be ip http server so this is the normal http then we need to enable the uh, HTTPS. So the command is IP HTTP secure server. So this will actually create a um, digital certificate. As you can see that the digital certificate was created. Yeah. The next thing we need to specify is the um, 
uh, the local login because by default the root, router or switch will will actually try to authenticate using a triple a server so we would like to use the local usernames and passwords configured within the ios device so the command is ip http authentication local from there we are done we can save our configuration by writing to memory and confirm then i can do the show ip interface brief to see if my interface is up so from the router side we're good to go so i can exit from here and get to my pc it's a linux box so let me start my pc and it shouldn't take long to start so my pc is starting Okay, the PC is up so I can log in. And I just want to confirm if I have the correct IP on this machine. So that will be IP address Great. Okay, so we gave the router an IP of 10.10.10.1 and this machine this PC is Assigned an IP of 10 dot get to the web GUI and connect So I am at the web GUI. So all I need to do is type HTTPS or HTTP, doesn't matter. Then type in the IP address of the router or switch. That will be 10.10.10.1. 10 so I'm being uh, warned of the digital certificate being self-signed and we can just accept the risk because it's a self-signed certificate and then confirm it's asking for username and password i just have to type in my username and my password press ok so here we are fully connected to the router and it shows you the router model we are using the 7200 series and what you can do as well, you can do a bit of configurations within the GUI. Uh, I'll walk you through some of them and show you how it's done. So if I click monitor the router and then I can click, let's say I want to uh, create access list. So it's faster uh, when using the command line and that is why most engineers they prefer using the the, uh, uh, the terminal to, to, to do the configuration better than the web GUI. So this is how it's done on the web GUI when configuring your access control list. So you got your normal access list that is your standard access list which is 1 to 199. Then you got the extended one which is from 100 to 199 and so forth. So basically this is how the web GUI looks like on a Cisco router and to summarize this in this demonstration I explained to you that a Cisco router apart from SSH and Telnet can uh, the router or switch can be accessed through HTTP or HTTPS then I explained to you the, um, the risk of using HTTP instead of HTTPS and then I walked you through on how 
to enable http and https on a cisco router and the commands which are executed on that and finally i showed you how the GUI looks like and how other uh, administrative tasks can be done on the on the web GUI. and typing commands on the terminal it's much faster than using the web GUI. i hope this has been informative and i would like to thank you for watching i'll see you in the next